apartment buildings, retail shops. <laughs> what? Oh, it's so hot. Ugh. It's like, ugh. All right, I'm just kidding. You guys always got tired of me whining about how cold it is, and today it's 74 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 24, 25 degrees Celsius. And we're heading down to the White House right now, and then we're gonna walk over to the US Capitol. We've been told there's a lot of new security arrangements at the Capitol tonight for the joint session. Let's go check it out. Let's check out our ride. Ride is good. So we're at the cathedral. We're going to make our way through here down Mass Avenue, past the vice president's house and the embassies. Our normal run downtown. And then we'll dump this at the White House. And we'll go for a walk. Maybe we'll get some lunch at a food truck. Maybe we'll buy lunch for some homeless guy. We'll see. So this school is where Al Gore and the Bush kids and Rockefeller's kids, Dan Quayle's kids, and a bunch of other political sons and daughters attended school. I think Britt Hume went here, Fox News uh, anchor Britt Hume, also a graduate of this school. And it's here on the grounds of the National Cathedral, back behind these trees. Alrighty, let's let's have the fun part. Downhill. That's the Embassy of Liberia, a African nation which was once thought to be designed to be the home of free American slaves, but it never really took hold. Okay. Now I pointed out the Norwegian ambassador's house several times, but that over there behind Queen, the Princess, Crown Princess Martha, is the official bicycle of the Norwegian ambassador. That's the Nor Norway One, or whatever they call, whatever they want to call it. That's the official Norwegian ambassador's bicycle. Oh, this is a cute dog. Alrighty, we're on the downhill now. This is fun. So uh, there's the vice president's house. Yeah, that big, big grove of trees right over there is the vice president's house. As I've mentioned in the past, we're, we're not going to see the vice president's house again for about four or five months. Not until the fall when the leaves start to drop. As it's basically just foliage everywhere. All right. Huh, somebody's coming out of the old Iranian embassy. And the old Iranian ambassador's house is getting some work done. I believe that's maintained by the Office of Foreign Missions. The Office of Foreign Missions is a U.S. government entity that takes care of our embassies overseas and deals with other nations' embassy needs here in the U.S. Since we don't quite uh, have diplomatic relations, oh, whoa, with the Iranians, Office of Foreign Missions is kind of responsible for that. I don't know who maintains our embassy. Do we still even have the physical embassy in Tehran? I don't even know. So as I mentioned before, these trees are being protected from the road construction crews. Uh, DC government requires fences. Fences to be put around trees whenever a road is going to be repaired. Otherwise they find that the backhoes and the bulldozers and the guys with the shovels and stuff, they just kind of well, they don't really pay that much attention to the trees. And the city has lost a lot of trees along the road. So, they mandate a fence. And every tree is locked up until after the construction is finished. Ah, we got here the Korean embassy. Could be the Korean ambassador. Nice big BMW. No, it's not. It's a somewhat high ranking, though. It was like license plate number three or four. So like, consulate general or something maybe. They're gonna let us go. 
So that, that's the Egyptian ambassador's house right there in this nice posh place. We showed you the Egyptian embassy the other day. And back here we have the Philippines embassy. And next to the Philippines is Vietnam. And some of you were asking to see this. This is Kenya, Kenya's embassy, currently under renovation here in Washington, D.C. The embassy of Kenya is this building, which is all boarded up. So let's cut over this way. Oh, this is the Gandhi statue outside of the Indian embassy. India is having a horrible time right now. A significant number of COVID cases, an overwhelmed healthcare system. There we go, that's a nice bike dump. Didn't lock. There we go, now it's happy. That's annoying. What's up at the White House today? We got a truck over there. Not sure what kind of truck, a couple trucks. Secret Service. This one's coming out. Big white panel van. big white truck coming out with government plates and Secret Service driver it looks like guy was wearing all black probably probably still got these ugly fences up let's go around to the north Lafayette Park Whew. So down there, they've got, uh, they're getting ready to reopen the Smithsonian's. They've got their welcome back signs already pre-printed out. So when they reopen, they know, know what signs to put up. Hmm, what we got going on today? Looks like there's a Department of Interior Park Service crew in there today. Straightening up the trees. Mowing. But otherwise, it's pretty quiet, always. Ugh. The fact is that the Secret Service and the other cops, they would just love to keep this barricaded forever. I mean, in their world, that would be the perfect, perfect ideal. But and as long as they don't get any fight back from the administration, no, that just doesn't change. Uh, we got a DC cop out here. I don't think there's any protests or anything. I don't see any riot squads today. I see a couple DC police cruisers. Another cute dog. I'm just being surrounded by little dogs today. Our Korean protester is here. She wants to get US troops out of Korea. And Let's take a picture. Pretty quiet day. No, no spotters at the moment. Pull us. A couple of Department of Interior guys walking around there, Park Service. They got like the Ranger outfits. Walking on the side. Well, probably White House staff as well on Pennsylvania Avenue. Yeah, those are the Department of Interior Park Service guys. The Rangers. And the West Wing is over here. The President's schedule today is basically empty. There is a, uh, a joint session tonight at 9 o'clock. But uh, there are no other public events scheduled. 
Yesterday they did a speech on the North Lawn, but I was stuck. I couldn't get out here. I was hoping I could come out and film that. Next time they're on the North Lawn, I'm going to try to come out here. I got a, uh, I have an iPhone telephoto lens arriving from Amazon tomorrow morning. We're supposed to have a helicopter takeoff tomorrow. And hopefully with a higher power lens, I can give you guys a better view. So we're on the other side of the White House now, where it's still locked up. They actually have a few guards down here by the Treasury on bikes, which isn't abnormal. There's usually a couple policemen somewhere on this sidewalk protecting the Treasury. Oh, well, it's not like they have any money in there. <laughs> That's the National Press Club building. Those are the guys who said I'm not a journalist. The same day my video was shown across the world. <laughs> not bitter about that. So oftentimes if you watch C-SPAN, you'll see like press conferences from the National Press Club. And that's where they have basically what's like make news sessions where some organization or group will come in and have a press conference to uh, try to get the, the nation's press that may or may not be busy that day to cover their story. So over there is the Trump International Hotel in the old U.S. Post Office Pavilion. I'm not sure how much of that is open to the public. It's got a beautiful, beautiful lobby from the days of when it was the mail sorting facility. But now it's all a big hotel. Okay, so we're going to go over to the archives here. And the original FDR memorial. I showed you this guy a couple weeks ago. But a couple of you asked me more about it. So FDR specified to his friend, Justice Frank Fruiter, that uh, if they ever build a memorial me of DC, don't make it any bigger than my desk. Make it a stone about this big and place it in the corner over here by the archives. And so that is the memorial for that conversation between Justice Frank Furter and FDR. And that is the FDR memorial, the original one. Now there's a new FDR memorial down by the Tidal Basin that was built about 15, 20 years ago. And in about 15 or 20 years, we'll probably be flooded <laughs> due to the rising of the Potomac. But this original FDR one is going to be here for a while. So those of you who saw the movie National Treasure, this is the building that Nicolas Cage stole the Declaration of Independence from, or the Constitution. That was actually kind of a funny movie. Just sort of a Sunday afternoon movie. You actually sell copies of the movie in the gift shop there. Okay, we, we bailed out. We got a scooter. So let's uh, get into this bike lane here in the middle of the road. There we go. And we're going to make our way up to the U.S. Capitol. I'm not sure how close we can get today. The scooter is functioning. We're at about 11 miles an hour right now. 12. And it hasn't shut down yet due to the GPS geofences. They've closed off a lot of the area up here, but let's, let's go take a look and see what we can find. See how close we can get to the white, to the Capitol. Given the security increase tonight. That's the old press museum, soon to be Johns Hopkins DC campus. This is the Canadian Embassy. Pretty quiet right now. National Gallery of Art. Classical and modern art up here. This is the U.S. District Courthouse. This is where all the big cases start out because this is the court of first instance, basically, for many of the D.C. Uh, issues, you know, the government lawsuits and whatnot, and big federal crimes. Oliver North was on trial there. Up on top of the National Gallery, you can see a big blue chicken because it's art. It is art. Oh, wow. Am I going to make this light? I don't think so. Eh, let's go for it. So it looks like they've put up the bicycle rack fence again. Yay, our fence is back.
Wow, there's lots of cops down here too. So they've got that little crush barrier bicycle rack thing set up where the old barbed wire fence used to be. But it's not, uh, it's not fully shut down. You can still cross through it if you want. Looks like they're doing a traffic stop up here. I'm sure they're going to be sketch. Everyone's suspicious. Ice cream trucks. God, that music is insipid. It's all ice cream too. There's not like any falafels down here. Let's go take a look at this road up here. It also has security. These are like unmarked white police cars. They've got they've got lights on the top, but they don't have any name on the side. It's like they went to like Hertz rental cop cars and grabbed some generic white police cars. <laughs> Oh, and we hit a geofence. We have hit the fence, which restricts our scooter. No riding. No fun. Let's see how, how good we can go here. I don't think we can go up this road. Not on the scooter, but we can go behind the building. Oh, the National Guard's up there. So there's a couple of National Guard guys still here. Jeez. That is one like never ending deployment. What was that phrase? Mission creep? So there's the Capitol building over there, the Rayburn building over the back in a no riding zone. Ah. So the scooter is basically dying again. And I just have to probably get to that street light. Still in the no fun zone. Oh, here we go again. We're back. So we have to stay away from these house office buildings because they're no fun zones. You know what we'll do instead? Let's go down to the baseball diamond. Yeah, let's go down to Nationals Park. That should be a fun zone. Yeah, you would think baseball is fun. Let me see what we got. There's an abandoned church down here that's really cool. Yeah, I can do this. So back here is an old church that kind of got, I think it's called Culture House. Cult Culture House, 700 Delaware Avenue, Southwest DC. And it has become kind of an art project. And a music studio and kind of an art gallery too. This is all, this is all sorts of different COVID artwork at the uh, viralartproject.com creative commons. So you guys can take take these pictures and do with them what you want. There's the art gallery. <laughs> I should put this on a bunch of my people. I think you're on mute, mate. So yeah, this is this is Culture House, 700 Delaware Street in Southwest DC. Oh, I know what we can see here too. There's a cool building down here. At least it's cool to me. And it's cool to my one follower, Wild Bill. I think Wild Bill will like this one place down here. This is the DMV. This is where you go if you want to get your car licensed and inspected in DC. So you have to drive through and do a vehicle emissions test. And let's keep going down here. Down back here. You see a bunch of old ambulances back there and a rescue squad fire truck here and that's the brush unit right there dc actually does have a brush fire truck because they occasionally have brush fires this is the fire department repair shop or as my kids call it where fire trucks go to die this is a facility run by the dc government 
for fixing fire trucks. And if you like fire trucks, well, who doesn't like fire trucks? Everyone should like fire trucks. Oh, this is my fire truck, Tenley Town. So this is where they fix all the ambulances and fire trucks that are broken. It's a pretty cool place. If you're like a fire truck guy. Which I know. When uh, Marine One lands at the White House, the press and the staff, they are V-22s, often land over here at Fort McNair because they've got more landing area. Now, technically, I'm not supposed to film a military base under some antiquated World War II, pre-World War II law against filming, but, you know, whatever. This is where the, uh, the conspirators were, were had the trial for, in Abraham Lincoln's case, the Abraham Lincoln conspirators were hung right over here at Fort McNair following a trial in a courtroom there. That building is only open four times a year if you want to take a tour of that courtroom, which I'm trying to get on. Now this is our newest sports stadium. This is Audi Field. Audi Field is where DC United plays soccer. This is in the Major League Soccer and DC United plays here. I think they actually have started uh, in-person games. I think you can actually attend a game here at Audi Field. I have not been here because I just haven't had a chance and because I'd rather watch Arsenal on my Saturdays. Maybe we'll bring the kids out here to a DC United game. And just over from DC United is your World Series, well, actually a year ago, your World Series champions, Washington Nationals and Nationals Park. So I think this is home plate right back here. Yeah, this is home plate. So left field up there. Whoa, look at this, oh, come on. <laughs> That's like a four foot, four inch bump. Sidewalk of death. Sidewalk of death is everywhere in DC. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, this is left field over here, but we can't really see much of it from here. Let's go down a bit. Maybe we can go toward like the center field gates. Now this whole area has been drastically redeveloped in the last 20 to 30 years because of the baseball field. We now have apartment buildings, retail shops. <laughs> Ow. Okay. I'm okay, thank you. Ow. <laughs> uh, ow. Hmm. Okay, so we've crashed. And we're bleeding and we need to get rid of the scooter that kind of hurt yes yeah, so we got some blood and we've scratched our Apple watch oh yeah we bloodied up ourselves there too Hang on a second. I'm going to turn the camera off for now. Ow. <laughs> so we crashed. We're bleeding in a couple places. Let's uh, get cleaned up. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, so damage report. Uh, we scraped up our arm pretty bad. We bloodied our hand. I think we bloodied our knee. Scratched my Apple Watch. That's what I'm really most annoyed about. And uh, hurt our pride. <laughs> but hey, other than that, we're fine. We're gonna walk down the street here a couple blocks. There's a CVS drugstore. I'm gonna grab some uh, saline solution or something, and some gauze or something, some, some antiseptic spray. So we'll do a little boy scouting for a bit, and we'll come back in just a bit. Let's find the first aid section. The back teen hurts more than the wound. This stuff, this stuff hurts. Ah. This 
This one is just mostly dried blood. This isn't really that bad, I think. <laughs> yeah, 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 there's a wound there. Yeah. Here's the thing, I wasn't running stop signs, I wasn't running a red light, I was just on a straight road and that stupid scooter. I don't like the Lime scooters, They're, the handlebars are too high up, your center of gravity is all messed up. And I paid the price today, say la vie. So guys, we're down at the Navy Yard. Uh, we have patched ourselves up, uh, assessing our damage. We scratched the iPhone, a little bit of damage on the camera, but it's functional, just cosmetic. We should still be able to film. So let's go find some lunch and then we'll make our way around this area. So we're gonna get some Korean tacos. Korean tacos are basically tacos with Korean food on the inside instead of like beans and burrito mix or whatever. They're actually really good. Um, I think it's probably a California thing that spread. It's actually spread over to Asia. You can get Korean tacos in, in uh, Hong Kong and stuff. You got to get back on the horse or in this case the product of some Chinese company wholly owned by an offshore holding company <laughs> building the cheapest possible electronics transportation device they can but you know it's a horse so we are mobile again so we're back up at the cathedral and I wanted to take you somewhere for a moment because earlier today I, I spoke about this school over here as being the school where Al Gore went to school, Brit Hume, many famous politicians and Washington DC, uh, political press and all that, attended this school, the St. Albans School, which is a boys' school here on the National Cathedral grounds. One famous alumni I didn't mention because I've mentioned them all the other times was Michael Collins, the command module pilot of Apollo 11. And sadly, while I was out today filming, Michael Collins passed away at age 90. So this was the school that Michael Collins attended when he was a young man. Oh, I should also mention the Marriott family also went to this school. That building is actually named after the two Marriott brothers who attended St. Albans. Rest in peace and Godspeed, Michael Collins, graduate of the St. Albans School in 1948. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twain. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot.